Hi, welcome back to Film Fellas, and here's Rob. We're going to be talking Forgotten Greats with Rob. Um, Rob has uh, had a look over all our Forgotten Greats, and we were having a chat on the phone, and I said, oh, Rob, you know, you might as well come on. You must have a Forgotten Great, because he has a hard drive full of films, most of which we probably can't talk about on this channel for ratings reasons. But the um, So, Rob, um, we talked Forgotten Greats, and what's your Forgotten Great? It's a movie uh, called Digstown. And I've got to be honest with you, I've not heard of this movie. Never heard of well, it you, you It has another movie. title. It's well. called Midnight Sting in the UK, so you might have heard of right. it under that. And um, that's one of the reasons why most people, I would imagine, have heard mm. of it. And it took me a long time to kind of track it down. So I watched it in England on VHS. Uh, so did you first see it in America? No, no, I watched it, um, as I say, uh, in England, at mid uh, but you can't find this Midnight Sting. Right. So when I was looking for it and looking for it and looking for it, I remembered, you know, I know the actors in it and I know the stories about, um, but I couldn't find it. And it turns out it's because it got released, actually, as Digstown pretty much everywhere except England. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I think you will have heard of it or most people have heard of it. Also. So he's got a great cast. Yeah. So, so well, let's start off, as we always do with a Forgotten Great. Give us an overview of the plot, but try and not spoil it in any way. Yeah, well, Where everybody's yeah. appetite for, for watching well, this it's, film. Well, it's a conflict. So it's about two hustlers. So the problem with describing the plot is you're going to have to give away some spoilers, but it's 1992, so I think if after 30 odd years you haven't seen it. Um, and it, it, it's basically, it's a story where we've got a baddie who controls a town and the town is built on boxing and everybody's into boxing. And then you've got the James Wood character who's a hustler and he makes a bet that he could name a boxer who could beat 10 of their, uh, the town's boxers in the one single day. 10 box, 10 fights, 24 hours, 10 boxes, uh, and everything's at stake. Well, the, the stakes get escalated as the okay. puzzle unravels. Um, and that's why it's, it's really good, because it's also got the subplot of the boxer. He's an aging guy. Mm. He's 48. He's never had his chance. He's kind of missed his shot. And this is Louis, Louis Gossett Jr. Yeah, right. this character. And it's 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 a Rocky Balboa mm. story before they made Rocky Balboa. You know, can you come back? And, and if you ever miss that chance... Can you actually do it? So it, it, it's got that's the other plot line as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, absolutely awesome film. Okay, really missed out. So as we always do, three reasons why people should check out this movie. What's your first reason? Uh, it's it's a genuinely good fun movie. Um, I it's got a lot of plot. You know what's going to yeah. happen. Well, but... yeah, because you know who's hustling who and and all this and. They always, I love, I love the genre of comp. Mm -hmm. You've got to love uh, the Sting, you, um, even Ocean's Eleven, and all these. Where there's, it's all about who's actually the smarter guy. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's your main reason. The second reason is um, you can't name a, a bad performance by James Woods, Bruce Dern, Oliver Platt, Lou Gossett Jr. They're all good. Um, and the third is it, it's the jokes still work. Mm. You know, thirty years on, they're not. You you won't fall off your chair laughing, but it, it, it's good fun all the way through. So can't recommend it enough. So let, let's go back into the second reason there. So Cass, so you mentioned James Woods. James Woods, great actor, versatile. I always remember The Hard Way. Is it Michael J. Yeah, Fox? Yeah, Michael Fox. Yeah, it was uh, was a great film with James Woods. In. So he always kind of has this tough guy. Kind of exterior, but can actually do comedy as as well. Well, this is this this exemplifies his role. I mean, it's directed by the same guy that did Fletch Lives, or right? Or Fletch. Okay. So same you, guy who also did the Golden Child with yeah, Murphy. Yeah. yeah. So you've got a main character who's a wise cracking, um, tough guy. Yeah. So that kind of follows through. So you have got James Woods. He's wonderfully sarcastic. He's wonderfully um, smarter than everybody else, and and James Woods nails it. Absolutely nails it. I always get the impression that James Woods actually is this guy in real life. Right. This is one of the as Probably close is. as And he's got Oliver Platt in. Yeah. So what, what role does Oliver Platt play in? He's his accomplice. Right. So they've got a series of cons that go through, but he's his main guy. Obviously, we find out, the audience find out they're in it together at the start, and then oh, he, he comes across him later mm. on as part of the, the con. And so he sets the con, and then James Wood backs the con with the financing. Right. But it's all obviously so. I mean, because Oliver Platt was on the fringes of the Brat Pack, yeah, you know, Flatliners uh, and, and things uh, like that. The Musketeers movie, yeah, exactly. You know, so he was always on the fringe of the Brat Pack. My my favorite 
Oliver Platt um, movie is um, guilty pleasure of mine. Executive decision. Yeah. <laughs> one, of the, one of the he plays a scientist, the the geeky guy who's invented the 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 plane. Yeah, thing he found or, the bomb, doesn't he? Yeah. One of the few movies where uh, good Seagal movies. I know, yeah, not, because he's yeah. only in it for ten minutes. And he gets killed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's I, I, you know, it's one of those films where you know what's going to happen. You, you know, from the opening scene where Kurt Russell's flying the plane, you know. He's going to have to end yeah. up having to land the plane, but actually, it's done in a very, very yeah. funny way where everything is touching, setting up alarms, and it has that believability to it. Um, well, it's the same thing with this. You know, ultimately, they're going to get away with the con. Yes, um, uh, but what I, what, one of the things that makes the story work for me, is James Woods comes up with this con, mm. and he gets it wrong, and he's so invested in the money, and he's so he's got his life on the line, and he actually he loses. And then he has a genius moment at the end. And it's the genius moment right. that allows the con to work. And you see the wheels turn mm. over. Um, because what you work out is that Bruce Dern realises he's being conned, knows he's being conned, and, and disrupts the con at different stages. Mm. And James Woods doesn't have a plan B. And that's why I like it, because I don't like movies where the bad guy is just stupid. Yeah. and Or, conversely, where... The good guy is so clever. Mm. And again, you know he's going to get away with the money, because you know. But it's just right at the last minute, the, the mm. last bit. And it's not a twist. It's absolutely set up. But you see the the eureka moment, yeah. and I, I can I can do it, and that's it. Brilliant. It's also, so you mentioned Bruce Dern as well. I, I, Bruce Dern's an interesting actor. So um, I was chatting on one of the other episodes about the actor Harry Dean Stanton and how... It, it, almost Harry Dean Stanton has been eternally old. It's like he's been old within every movie that I've ever seen him, but he's like a cool cat on the block. And Bruce Dern's another one. It's, uh, yeah, I think I probably first came across Bruce Dern in The Burbs. He, okay. he, he did in The yeah, Burbs yeah. with Tom Hanks, which I, I also think is a very underrated movie, actually. Um, it was one of those movies that you ended up watching, probably went straight to VHS over here. Probably. Uh, yeah, he, yeah, you know, we watched it that way. And um, but he's also in, which is arguably my favourite Tarantino movie, which will be kind of quite controversial with a lot of people because a lot of people don't like it, um, which is Hateful Eight. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. So I, because for me it is, it's, it's Tarantino does Agatha Christie. Um, obviously Bruce Dern is also in Django Unchained as yeah, well. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I know that when you say he's perpetually old, if you took a photo, if you printed out a screenshot of Digstown and a screenshot of Hateful Eight 30 years apart, yeah. it looks the same. Exactly what I mean. It's, you know, it's like he's always, been, it's like he's in some time capsule. Yeah. Um, the Paul Rudd of, mm, uh, of yeah, the yeah, age. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and he always seems to play this kind of grumpy, kind of, you, you know, kind of really grumpy, kind of like old man in it. I don't know what he's like. What, what well, kind of character he's playing? The villain. Um, and he's. He's wonderfully dislikable, mm. you know, because the idea is that you, you don't like, you've got to like the James Wood character, even though he's a baddie. And the only way to like the baddie is to make the big bad worse. Yeah. Are you with me? And he, he, straight away, you don't like him. But the character is really complex. He's actually introduced um, by being a good dad. He's looking after his son and he's hooked into the, the con by Oliver Platt by Oliver Platt conning the son. So he kind of comes in as a, as a father, as a rescuer. So he's not just baddie. Mm -hmm. He's not, I'm going to just rule the town and be the, the overlord baddie. He's, he's, he's a well-rounded character. Yeah. And he's really smart. He, he highlights um, the dangers of the plot and the dangers of the hustle. And then at one moment, again, you see, um, you see that he knows he's been hustled, but he goes, right, I'm off to sort this out. Mm. He, he goes off, he, he sorts out the the hustle he out hustles or out cons the con man comes back in and ups the bet because he's got the up hand and then you find out later on um as all of these movies do he's got an ace up his sleeve yeah yeah but actually he's got two aces up his sleeve and that's the the final big reveal where he, he genuinely wins mm. all the way through until the, the eureka moment at the end and there's there's no worse than in a con movie where the buddy just 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 lays down and takes it. I rewatched um, in preparation for this a couple of other con movies, and I watched uh, Ocean's Eleven. Yeah, and Andy Garcia 
just accepts it. You mm. don't, you don't, you don't interrupt the con, don't do anything. Uh, and but then... isn't that because he's helpless against the con? He's trying to work out what is happening. He thinks he's worked out what is happening. He's got the best security. You, you know, he's got the safety net of the world's most complicated safe deposit kind of system. You know, bank vault sort of thing. He he basically is outsmarted, and it's his overconfidence is therefore his downfall. That's yeah. the point of that. Yeah, maybe so. But but this movie is different because they both know they're being they're, they're trying to con one another. Yeah, and it's because he knows he's being conned. He has to elevate himself, right. and that's why he beats he beats uh, he beats James Woods he, okay. a, a few times, in fact. And then Louis Gossett Jr. Mm. So I, I'm, I was trying to think. There was a, I'm pretty sure Louis Gossett Jr. is in. Uh, is it? Oh, it's a, it's a like a Tom, it's a top, top gun rip. Iron Eagle. Iron Eagle, you, you know, which was awful, <laughs> <laughs> quite frankly. And I th- I'm pretty sure there's a sequel, Iron Eagle 2. I, I, that's where I remember Louis Gossett Jr. No, really, because this is, you, uh, I, there's there's two movies I go to for Louis Gossett Jr. The first one is Officer and a Gentleman. Right, okay, right. So that is a film that um, I have seen, but I couldn't. I, you know, I remember the bit oh, in the end yeah, where exactly he's that. where he where um, Richard Gear walks in and carries back three yeah. and carries it. And I've got to be honest with you, I don't do romantic comedies. Oh my god! Just uh, having a quick look at Louis Gossett Jr. He's in. I should really do this as a forgotten great. I forgot. Is it Enemy Mine? Yeah, with Dennis Quaid. Oh my god! What a movie! Oh, what a yeah. that is that I remember one summer. Me and this guy, Andrew Broxholm, whatever happened to Andrew Broxholm, um, we, his mum used to babysit me and there was a video shop down the road. And we literally, I think I got a pound a day as about 50p a day. And he, he had the same or something like that. And we just basically, we were both latchkey kids. And this is probably where my reckless kind of knowledge of movies come from largely. We were, there was a video shop down the road and the guy used to, it was something like a pound of rent or three quid for then the top tier ones. Okay. But the guy just used to let us rent a movie for 50p as long as it wasn't, you know. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so we ended up going through all the Jackie Chan movies, Project A, you know, Armour of God and all of that, and working our way through lots of kind of things. So essentially what we used to do then, we'd just pick it from a cover. I always remember the cover for Enemy Mine, and we watched it, and it was absolutely amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, He's in Jaws 3, but I can't remember him in Jaws 3. What about my other go-to movie is The Punisher with Dolph Lundgren. The Punisher, yeah, I've just got to that here, The Punisher. the, The Dolph Lundgren one, I remember seeing it, I can't really remember it. No, it's it's, uh, it's all right. It's it's better than you think it is. Um, it's better than it deserves. Uh, than than you, you can't beat the John Bethnal Punisher, mm. but you certainly can beat the Thomas Jane. I say I like the Thomas Jane one. Do you not like the Thomas Jane one? Um, it's, it's, too, all, it's too John Travolta. It's a John Travolta movie. He's also in a fantastic movie. Um, I always remember seeing um, when I was a kid as well called The Deep. Um, kind of like a Jawsy rip-off sort of thing, but um, but yeah, Iron Eagle and um, but yeah, Enemy Mine. I forgot about Enemy Mine. Enemy Mine because um, I'm pretty sure that is um, it's a Wolfgang Peterson film. Oh, okay. yeah, it's one of Wolfgang Peterson's early kind of like American movies. Okay. You, you know, and he'd go off and, and go and create some like, great movies. So you know, I mean, he was the go-to action. I, I'm pretty sure he'd done. He'd done Das Boot in Germany. Um, and Hollywood said he's a check. And, and basically, yeah. I think I, uh, Enemy Mine was one of his first okay. kind of American films off the back of Das Boot, which if you've not seen Das Boot, the, the, the series, not the film, the, the original German series is terrific. It's amazing okay. sort of thing. So, um, so who got it, Junior? Who, who else has got it? Well, Heather Graham is in it. It's one of the early roles. A young, young, a young, Heather young Graham. Now, I read a, a review of it that says that she's not. You could cut her out of the, the whole movie, and it won't it won't affect the plot. Mm. But she's actually in a couple of very key scenes with some very key. It's not the dialogue; mm. it's what she's doing that reveals later on. So when 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 you find out the ace of the sleeve, mm. you it don't come out of nowhere. Because it's what she's doing, not what she's saying, but what she's doing that leads to a. It's it's a. Oh, it was set up right. earlier on. Okay, 
And she, there's some, I mean, she, yes, she set up as love interest and flirty, and they do have some flirty dialogue and all this. Um, but you have to watch what what's go, what she's doing yeah. to really be rewarded later on when uh, the, the the first ace is played. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. it's Heather Graham. I'll definitely be watching what she's, uh, <laughs> what she's doing when I get around to watching this movie. Um, so what was your third reason? So the second one is cast, basically. Yeah. What was the first reason? Uh, the first reason is uh, it's the genre. The, the, yeah. Now, I'll tell you bef- about the genre a little bit because, as I say, I went back and I watched a couple of other con films. And the, and the sting is... Oh, the, 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 yeah, you don't get yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, you don't yeah, get yeah. that. And I think is... this is why it was called Midnight Sting. I think we're trying right. to capitalise on that. But it happens in almost all... Uh, it's a plot hole. It's in almost all sw- um, twist movies. Mm. Not just con movies, but twist movies. And it isn't in this one. And I've, I've purposely watched it for the lookout, where they have two characters who are in on the plot, mm. who have deliberately vague dialogue so the audience isn't spoiled. So right. they often do the pronoun game. He said this, that's him that did that. Yeah. And you go, well, which him is it? Or you have it where um, they... They absolutely don't. They have a conversation which isn't observed by anybody else, yet it's done for the audience. Yeah, yeah. And Dick Sandler, that everybody who's in on the con is in on the con. Right. So that's a, a big plot hole problem I have with other genre, uh, movies of the same. Yeah. And it doesn't do it in this one. So again, it elevates it a little bit more. Uh, and the third one is it's it's a really good um, underdog story about right. this forty eight year old guy. Can he can he beat ten years? Can it be done? And he, he has this kind of rocky moment and this inspirational moment. Um, Are we talking about when we got it due yeah, to the box? Yeah. Right. So so he has to do ten five. That's the that's the best. So the okay. the Dick's Town have got they had um, it's a it's a boxing based town. They're all in on they're all love boxing. Bruce Dern made his money by rigging a uh, a fight. By the Charles Mason Diggs, what's the name of the town's name? Right. After. And he rigged it. Nobody knew he rigged it, but that's how he made all his money. And he could beat he beat five guys in one night. Yeah. So are really five guys? Well, my guy can beat ten. Yeah. So, okay. So there's that. He gets a lot of the witty lines, does right. Luke Gossett Jr. He gets a lot of the comedy. Um, and after Officer and Gentleman, I'd say it's his better role. So right. okay. love that. And then the third reason is it's actually a genuinely good fun movie. Yeah. Um the fight scenes are arguably a little over choreographed. They're a little bit. I watched... Are they as bad as the fight scenes in Rocky, where you can clearly see he's missing? I'll I'll tell you what they reminded me of. Uh, they reminded me of fight scenes from the A Team, where uh, you don't think it's a stunt double, yeah, but you don't think they're actually punching each other. There's right. no for a boxing movie. The boxing's pretty low down. It's it's mm. not done well, but that's in keeping with the whole theme of the movie. It's a good fun movie, yeah. so you don't really need to see proper punches. So there's a lot of one punch knockouts, and there's a lot of um, kind of big swings that are blocked and then countered. Yeah. Um, but part of the fun of it is that. You know, right. you don't really mind. And one of the wonderful things about um, going back to movies that are 30 year old is that you see some small part actors that go on to have better careers. Go, oh, look at that. So there's um, Jim, I want to say Caz- Cazavel. I don't know how to pronounce that. Oh, Jim Ash- Cav- 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 Cavizel. Is that how you Play say it? Like Jesus. Yeah, yeah. So he's in it. Uh, and there's a loads of people in it. And you'll go, oh, I'm, I, he's that guy from that thing that, you know, and that's the, the pleasure of a 30 year old movie. Yeah, it's because. Um... Jim Caviezel, how okay. would you pronounce it, is actually one of my guilty pleasure TV shows. Oh, we're naming yeah. these now, aren't so, we? So um, I really love Person of Interest. I think I've, I've maybe wished, seen one or two. I wish we'd seen every episode in every season. Um, you, you know, so I'm just having a quick look through the cat. Yeah, so Jimmy Caviezel, who is obviously Jesus. Um, yeah, I don't recognise anybody else out of it. Yeah, but... you do. There'll, there'll be people that you'll look at who never made it, but is in a hundred... Character yeah, because yeah, probably... also, yeah, there's there's quite a lot of because he has to fight ten guys. There's ten minor actors. Then there's all the setup of the other. So it's got a lot of characters in it who are only in it for a little bit, but each one has their brings something to the role. Oh, I tell you, he's got in it. He's got a, so you're right in that you don't know the name, 
but you recognise the the person. So there's a guy in it called Randall Craig Cobb. X Randall, Te- yeah. And he's in Liar he, Liar. But he's also in this great Gene Hackman movie that I always remember seeing called Uncommon Valor. You ever seen that? You ever not seen Uncommon Valor? Check it out. So basically, um, Gene Hackman plays the father of um, a GI who's basically gone missing in Vietnam. Okay. And um, he basically gets a ragtag bunch of kind of like, you know, vets. And he that guy's one of them. I'm pretty sure he like he dies in a really heroic way mm-hmm. sort of thing. And virtually all the vets die, you know, in a in really heroic way. And Hackman basically goes and finds the... V- it's kind of like Rambo, but an intelligent Rambo with Gene Hackman okay. in, the, in the role. It's de- Honestly, check out Uncommon Valor. You really like it. So, okay, so... I've got to ask you a question though, Rob. I've not even heard of this movie. I've not even seen it. Why do you think it kind of bombed and would you kind of bombed. say it's a forgotten great? Uh, I think it bombed for a couple of reasons. It came out the same year as White Men Can't Jump, right. which is a con movie about sports. Yes. And that was the big tent pole of the mm. summer. Uh, Woody Hart and, uh, and uh, Wes and Sachs. I think that then they went on to make Money Train because they did chemistry. Mm. Uh, I think also... The central sport was is boxing, which I think Hollywood had kind of fallen out of. Rocky yeah. made it through the eighties, yeah, and then this is in early nineties, and we we kind of forgot about boxing, um, and obviously, arguably, doing a basketball movie uh, in this year, you know, rode on the back of the ascendancy of Michael Jordan, yeah, you know, the real kind of dream team basketball. So basketball was the was, new yeah, thing, yeah, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. So it missed out on that one. And I also it does look um quite a cheap movie. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's part of its charm. So it obviously won't made for a lot of money and it obviously won't marketed for a lot of money. But that's one of the reasons I like it. Yeah. The the, the it does look it does look a lot like a glorified uh, A-team movie. Okay. You know, it's a small rural town. They come in. Yeah. They have very over-choreographed fight scenes. Um, there's no real swearing. There's no real violence. Mm. There's nothing too much about it. It's just charming. It's But it's good yeah. fun. Okay. All right. Well, check out Diggs Town. Oh, what, what's this other name? Midnight Sting. Midnight Sting or Midnight Sting. And um, let us know in the comments below what you think about it. And don't forget... Part of the thing about film fellows, if you're just a regular person who, who, you know, has a passion for movies and you want to come on and do a Zoom chat and talk about your forgotten great, I think we're doing Event Horizon later on this week with somebody. Um, just get in touch below or get in touch with us on Twitter at Film Fellows UK and um, and come and talk to us about your forgotten great. So thanks for listening and watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>